I tend to ask for like a resume or a bio or what have you, but I'm sure that um, his bio will be too extensive for me to read out. So I'm just going to say just a couple of things. I know that he was a big time athlete here in the city of Patterson and then on to when he moved on to college. Uh, he has the distinction of being a member of the Brothers of Patterson Incorporated uh, among many other uh, organizations here in the city, in the county, in the state, including the uh, NAACP. Uh, and but I would say that is and you can correct me if I'm wrong that his biggest role is the role of being a, a father and a member of his community where he grew up where he also has the distinction of being the principal of the high school that he graduated from and I'm sure there's some um, uh, different feelings emotions and things of that nature probably every day that he goes into the building when, when he can remember when he was doing some of those mischievous things <laughs> that, that you young people are, are getting yourselves into now. I'm sure Mr. Moody can remember when uh, he was that guy uh, in the class and having a good time and things of that nature. Um, it's, I think it's always good when you, when you have that ability to come back, or not even come back, to stay mm -hmm. where, where you grew up and serve as a role model for your community. Um, Mr. Moody, there's so many different things that we can go into. Why don't we just start with um, with uh, high school sports? And that's just in honor of my man here, who's a big time sports uh, guy from the city of Patterson, Emmanuel Stark. <laughs> so <laughs> why don't we start with that? How, how, how is it? Um, Capers is his uh, maiden name now. Being, yeah, right. being <laughs> principal now. Uh, at a school where you you played for you know uh, you played for the city, uh, what's the differences and uh, does it help? Does that help you in your position having the, uh, those uh, certain experiences? Well, first of all, let me just thank you for for your introduction and um, again, you know, I, I'm I'm very blessed and, and pleased to be in the position that I'm in, and I, I don't take it for granted at all and appreciate you know the, the the magnitude of of my role in the community i'm glad you mentioned you know my my number one role and job is being a father you know we have to turn key or, or give information to the next generation our number one job is to make sure our kids are successful quality citizens so you know i take on that role and not only with my family life but also as the principal at, of Eastside high school but right. it is definitely interesting to come back uh, to the school that I graduated from and attended, uh, as you as you mentioned, you know a lot of people talk about how great they were in sports and how <laughs> everybody knew them. They were the man in their school, <laughs> but you know I, I, I was blessed to, to be a, a pretty good athlete and have the opportunity to play at a high level for in football. I also played basketball, so uh, I do kind of understand the life of a. Of a, of a teenager going to school and juggling all of the responsibilities. So uh, as you mentioned, I mean, part of uh, what, what makes me successful in my position is understanding and being connected uh, to the young people. I always say to my teachers and some of my colleagues, I have a weird ability to understand what the kid is going through because I really understand them and that's problematic because most of the things that kids want and they do is, is shouldn't really make sense to adults, but it makes sense to me. So I have to ask myself, what's wrong with me? <laughs> so, um, but you know, again, you know, part of part of um, the 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 job and coming back and understanding uh, the full scope of my responsibility was was kind of understanding where I came from and the way teachers taught me and the relationships I had with teachers. And I was blessed to come back, and there's still some very very good teachers and administrators who are in the school, who were there when I was there. You know, they taught me. Uh, so we worked together to create an environment. You know, it's a different time. Uh, uh, demographics have changed drastically. Um, but, you know, we worked together to put a, a program together that can, you know, rival some of the, some of the high-quality schools in the area. So that's our goal, to give the kids the best experience and have them graduate and to see kids or, or students who are uh, – classmates of mine who, who that's their children you right. know, yeah. and come back to see relatives and friends and I got relatives that's in the school um, and it's just interesting so it makes the job that 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 much more 
uh, serious for me, and you know, I have a stake in it that much more. You know, my daughter attends the school, so when mm -hmm. I'm creating policies and procedures uh, for the school, I have to keep that in mind. I'm doing it not only for other other folks' kids; I'm doing it for my kid and my right. nephews and my cousins. So, right. Um, so, so it's very interesting. But thank you very much. Well, you 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 also are a part of an organization that um, that I'm a member of. Um, it's the Brothers of Patterson Incorporated. You are one of the founding members. Um, and I think being able to, because you guys started from nothing, and, right. and, and now we have a large organization, yeah. and you were instrumental in galvanizing um, men around social and economic and educational issues. Uh, how did that come about? And do you are you able to lean on that sometimes, if and when necessary, uh, for your position? Absolutely. I would say, you know, being a part of the Brothers organization has probably been uh, one of the groups that has helped me the most in terms of doing the work that we do in the high school with the, with the students in the city of Patterson. Um, that group is so diverse, as you know, uh, uh, as a member, we have ourselves who are educational leaders of buildings, we have, you know, business owners, we have uh, folks who had, you know, difficult paths. So to pull all of those folks together and be able to touch and reach all aspects of the community uh, makes us a powerful group. You know, for us to come together and stick together, just having men, um, uh, predominantly African-American men come together and, and for a cause, period, is mm -hmm. powerful. Right. You know, we often talk about what, you know, when you talk about culture and things of that nature, you talk about other folks' culture. They have, you know, cultural mores and values. And with African-Americans, it's so sad because we, we're so, uh, you know, we've been so disconnected from a, a land, a, a people, a, a, you know, cultural values. So it's hard for us to come together to agree on anything. When should a, 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 young, a young lady in our culture be married? <laughs> when is the first time young people should have sex? Right. Those, these things are, are cultural and, and they should be taught to our kids. But we get a group of people together, we can't agree on something as simple as, you know, if an if, if, if African-American kid was assaulted and brutally beat for stealing potato chips, should that have happened? We right. have people all over the spectrum. Yeah, right. he should have got beat up. He shouldn't have stole. Right. You have people say, yeah. no, that's not yeah. right. He right. was hungry. He stole a bag of potato chips. Right. He doesn't deserve to be killed. But, you know, that, that just tells how disconnected sometimes we are. So when we come together to meet on a weekly basis and make the commitment to help our community, because even we don't always agree on things in our meetings, but we come together to try to do what's right for our community, to make our community a better place. So, I mean, that group has been, you know, substantially uh, beneficial to me in my role in, in helping to educate the next generation of young people in Patterson. Nice, nice. Great, great answer. Great answer. And I think um, just to piggyback on what you were talking about as far as culture, I want to throw out there and you can share more about uh, the significance of this. But your dad is um, is a, a, a wise man. He's a great man. Uh, he's a legend here in the city of Patterson. And I know um, on a lot of our shows with the plethora of different guests uh, from the local area, his name would come up, would come up, would come up all the time. Like it would just end up being in the in the interview. Right. Um, so I just want to mention regarding culture, he um, was... Uh, I don't want to say the wrong word, but he was he was made uh, a chief. I don't what, yes. what's a better word than made. Um, he I was crowned, crowned, I guess, crowned the okay, chief. Okay, okay, you know. So, yeah. what? Tell us uh, a, a little bit about that and and what the cultural significance uh, that is. Now, that, that was interesting. I mean, uh, when it first was brought to my attention, I thought it was just you know a ceremony as if you were naming someone or give them a name or you're honoring someone for the work that, they, that they've that they done in the community. Um, we have a particular member of the brothers, um, Mr. Holliday's a Nigerian brother. Um, he used to work for the district as, believe it or not, a secretary. When he was in uh, Nigeria, he had paperwork um, to where he was an engineer. So when he came over to America, America doesn't recognize some of the schools he went to. Right. They didn't recognize his certification, so he had to start over. He was actually a secretary, but when I saw his resume and some of the things that he did, I thought he would be instrumental in helping to teach math to 
the kids we had at the alternative school. So I helped to bring him in under emergency certification, got him certified as a teacher and kind of worked with him from, from, from that point. And I became kind of a mentor to him. So the, the actual uh, the, uh, the community that he's from in Nigeria, you know, he represents them. He's in, often in contact with the king of his, uh, his, his community. So that talk to them about the work we've, we've done here in Patterson and the, and the King uh, learned about my father and the work that he's done over his career and decided that you know he, he was worthy of being crowned the King of I me mean, a chief of, of his regime so he came to Patterson New Jersey with several other chiefs and crowned him the chief uh, chief of all chiefs the high chief of all chiefs of all of his contingency that's here in America you know so that was a you know a very uh, um, mm -hmm. great accomplishment uh, for for him and well deserved for all the work that he's done. Very true. positive, very, very true. positive. Uh, before we end the interview, I just want to make sure that I, I I touched on because you you, you mentioned the uh, alternative high school. It was uh, called Great Falls Academy, yes. where you were the educational leader in the yes. building, <laughs> and you guys uh, had something that you utilize called positive peer culture. Yes. And uh, you kind of, you spearheaded that. Yeah. Uh, I, I was working in the district at the time and at an alternative middle school and we emulated what you guys had already started. So I look at you and some of the uh, staff members uh, from that time as, uh, you know, leaders in, in, in that regard with positive peer culture. Um, and you've always held that high. Yes. As, as something that people should look at to utilize uh, as a means of redirecting youth. Can you tell us a little bit more about positive peer culture, why you like it, and how it's utilized to bring about positive change? Yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, again, when I came to Great Falls Academy, right out of college, I applied for a job in the city. I had a school social work certificate. Um, my father was on the board 15 years, 20 years, so... After getting out of college, I submitted my application uh, to the board. I also submitted it to him and asked him to shop it around and send it to folks. But <laughs> uh, to my surprise, you know, I, I didn't get any calls. It wasn't until I came to Patterson and I worked at a program uh, for, for troubled teens my first year. And I met a man named Mr. Joyner who worked, worked the program on Montclair uh, State. And I told him the certificate I had, and he said he was looking for that particular uh, certificate. And he brought me on as the school social worker. Uh, ironically, it was the school that worked hand in hand with my father. My father never passed my information on to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he felt that you know, you it, work. yeah, absolutely, you got work for it. I'm like, yeah, yeah you're on the board. You're no like, free hands, bro. But most people think you know you got your position. Your father right. put in the work, and, right. and and that was totally opposite of what happened. You know, and it, it made me earn the position and have an appreciation for the position. So when I came on, you know, as a school social worker, I worked there for three years and, and was immediately uh, moved to the, the administrator, the sole administrator of the school. At 26, I was functioning as a principal, was the youngest uh, employee in the school when right. I was the principal of the building. But coming on board, um, they, they had a, a, a debate behavior modification program called Positive Peer Culture. It was actually made, um, created for residential facilities to help teach social and emotional uh, uh, development skills to uh, young people. Because the biggest issue that we saw between uh, adults and young people, we were missing the boat. We, we, it's such a disconnect for what we expect young people right. to do and what they expect of themselves. Right, right, they want right. something completely different. We come to school and want right. them to respect each other. In their world, that stuff may get them killed. Right, Disrespect right, is, right. Is, is the culture. So yeah. we had to you know, really teach a value system. So the premise of positive peer culture Culture. It's basically you use the culture to 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 change the behaviors of, of young people. They correct in each other. We believe that we do not control a culture. You don't control a kid. You guide, motivate, and direct it. So by doing that, you allow the kids to confront one another for positive, and they get positive rewards for doing the right thing, and not token rewards, but natural rewards for stepping up and, and breaking up a fight or intervening and telling another kid that's just not right. 
what you said to him is not right. So you, you, the reward is natural. So when, when you start to do that and they begin to accept that and they want to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because they're getting a reward or you're getting 10 points on your grade, it's just because it's the right, right thing right, to right. do. We saw some tremendous uh, uh, change in the uh, behaviors of some of the young people 